G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be having a look at Solus KDE Plasma. So we're going to be installing this on real hardware. Single click by default in here. Um, there should be probably an English Australia, I think. Yep. Um, find my location automatically. New South Wales, no, but uh, hopefully we get another choice here. Yep, Perth. Down there. All right, so here we would normally get the choice of, that's my USB running this operating system, so I obviously can't install to that. So it gives you a choice of um, other disks if you wanted to install to a different disk, but that's the only one available. So what are our options here? Install a fresh copy of Solus alongside your existing operating system. This will resize Ferran OS next. So it's actually picked up which operating system is there currently, which is pretty good. I can replace Ferran OS. Erase all content on this disk and install a fresh copy of Solus. Assign mount points. Well, let's just check that out. So, yeah, we've got the mount points there. So I've already got 512 megabytes. Now I could probably just erase disk, but I might just um, erase disk would just mean automatic, go ahead, just delete, destroy everything and, ins and install Solus, but uh, I might just use the mount points. So I've got the disks there already, so I might as, well, might as well just use what I've got there existing. So if we click on unassigned, left click, and again, so you've got to left click twice. Um, that will be my, well, actually, left click. This one will be root. Yeah, actually, I don't think Solus like to do the EFI thing, do they? Swap, home, right. Doesn't give me an option for EFI. That's interesting. Let's go to the next page and see what we have. Okay. I know they used, uh, I think it's Clearboot or um, whatever it's called. I think I might just erase all content and see what it comes up with. So let's do that. Um, I won't worry about LVM. It's only a small disk. Um, this will be um, Solus Desktop. Uh, so create new ESP on device SDA. Oh, there we go. So if I had have done it the other way, let's go back and do this. So I've assigned that to root. So if I do that, no, it doesn't give me that option. No, un no usable ESP found on system. Okay. So do we have a, um, like a G part or something like that? No. Um, I think there's a KDE partition manager somewhere. Yeah, there it is. All right, so what can we do with this? Maybe we need to halt this installation. Didn't even ask me if I wanted to stop. <laughs> All right, so. Let's have a look at this. What can we do with this? Right click, double click, okay. FAT32, boot, bio scrub. Recreate existing file system. SDA1. Mm, I haven't used this before. I know it's going to be a boot. Uh, call it EFI boot. Mount point not found. Let's recreate. Let's 
go OK on that. Set label for partition device SDA1 to EFI boot. To boot, OK, let's try that. Uh, let's apply that, apply that. OK. Let's run the installer. English Australia. Um, don't worry about it automatically because it didn't find the right one anyway. Australia Perth. Let's try that. No, we're just going to have to do this one as root. Next. Um, yeah, that's SDA1. That's all right. Just want to double check that on the Plexter. Plextor. So that's the 512 or whatever it is. Yep, so let's try that. Add that now. Yep. We'll use a password to log in. We'll have administrative capabilities. Let's go next. Install. Installation will make changes to your disk and could result in data loss. Do you wish to install? OK. So this di disk that I'm running on is a solid state drive. Um, I think it's a 120 gig, uh, but definitely the USB 2 is a little bit slower for installation in this case. If this was on my NVMe, I think this would have been almost done in an instant. <laughs> You may now exit the installer. I will exit the installer. I won't restart now. I'll copy over my um, video and then um, I shall boot into the new installation. Hopefully I've done the installation correctly and I'll be able to boot into Solus KDE Plasma. Welcome back to the real hardware install of Solus KDE Plasma. <clears throat> install went OK happy to say. So now what I would like to do is probably another install. So instead of assigning mount points, I just want to do a straight out automatic install to see how that goes. So I'm very interested in, in seeing that. And probably we'll have a look around the desktop in a separate video. So let's do that first and see how the install reacts to an automatic install. So here we are back in the live disk of Solus KDE Plasma. We are going to attempt another install just to um, recap on what we did in the first one, KDE Partition Manager, just to check that out. And we have, yep, I created the FAT32 uh, EFI boot and the root partition there. So let's just do a straight out install and see how that goes. English Australia won't bother with the automatic location. Australia Perth and we're going to erase all content on this disk and install a fresh copy of Solus. Now it looks like you can install a fresh copy of Solus alongside your existing operating system. Replace your existing Solus 4.1 one Fortitude installation with Solus. So I'm going to erase all content. I'm not going to use LVM and uh, give the computer a name. And next. Add that now. Next. And install. Okay. 
And that's the install complete. So I will restart the computer, have a quick look in the desktop, see how they've uh, managed to partition the disks on an auto install. So I'll see you back in the desktop for another post install. So here we are back on the desktop of Solus KDE Plasma after an auto install. So I am interested to see how they how the automatic install partition the disk. So let's have a quick look at that. And now they've put a swap in place and a FAT32 XT4. So yep, very similar to what I do except it's added the swap. I tend not to worry too much about adding swap to SSD. It's uh, recommended sometimes unallocated space, which I always forget to do on here, but it's just a testing um, desktop computer, so I don't worry too much about it, but I probably should do it um, just to give an example of how you should uh, set up your SSDs and also, yeah, probably best to have swap anyway. So that is the install of Solus Plasma. That's another successful install for Solus KDE Plasma. Everything's working all right, booting okay. So now what I'm going to do is finish up this video. That's just the installs I wanted to show you. And uh, I shall create another video having a look around the desktop. So this was the problem I was having with Solus. Um, I wouldn't exactly probably call it a problem, but um, let's go into advanced mode. Now under boot, I had to change my boot order. Now the boot option one was this SATA option. And then I've got EFI and then the SATA. So EFI needed to be the first boot. Now, in most cases, I've never had to change that when it comes to booting an operating system for Linux. But for some reason, when I was booting Solus, there was quite a few installs that I did that actually I thought had not worked because it was telling me to put in... Um, that's because this SATA was booting first rather than the UEFI. So that's the UEFI and the Plexta. So this one's probably slightly different to what I'm used to, but I haven't had to do that with any other Linux. So that, so I had to just change my boot order to UEFI. Now, you know, all BIOSes are different. It depends on your BIOS what what the uh, boot order and what it looks like, because all BIOSes look completely different to the others. I just thought I'd let you know what this issue was, and as soon as I changed over to that. Um, not a problem at all and the reason I knew that is because it wasn't something I, I found it by mistake because when I did my F8 boot menu if that's here I don't know if that's here the F8 boot menu so the F8 boot menu when you press F8 on this machine it comes up with all the booting options for the USB whether you want to boot EFI or Legacy and whatever. Um, I just happened to hit the Plexta one and it booted. And then I realized, oh, so Solus did install without any issues whatsoever. Just happened to be a booting problem. So that's that explanation there. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.